Hi, welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson, and today we're going to be working on our oblong cat head basket taken from an old shaker pattern. Uh, it has a swing handle on it. It's a fun one to make, and I've incorporated a new technique on it. Uh, your material and cut pattern that you're going to need for this basket is half inch flat, cut five pieces 23 inches long, cut nine pieces 20 inches long. You're also going to need 11 sixteenths flat oval, one half inch flat oval, three or four millimeter cane, something for your rim filler, and you're going to need two ears um, that are an inch spread and about three and a half inches high. Okay, I've already laid mine out here to save time, and I've taken the long pieces, the, the um, five at 23 inches, and laid them under a spoke weight. I've marked them, and this is very important, on this pattern we're going to mark our centers on the right side. The right side, that is your smooth side. Line everything up, because we have uh, nine pieces at 20 inches, we're going to have four pieces on each side of the center, and the center one needs to weave under first and then over. So just remember those little points there. I have one left to weave in, and it's just a basic pattern over and under and line everything up. I've taken a piece of quarter inch reed, a scrap piece, and I'm going to use that for a spacer because I need this whole base spaced at a quarter inch. I always start from the center and work that piece and then work out doing that on each side. So I'm going to start from the center here and work up as I space this, I'm drawing these all down to give me a quarter inch spacing. And then come and start from the center and work down until these are all spaced a quarter of an inch. Okay, you can clamp your corners if you want to, but I'm going to skip that step today because I'm going to get right into uh, weaving. This is my 11 16 flat oval, and I'm coming in here, and I'm going to, about halfway, I'm going to start tapering this back, and put on about a 8 to 10 inch taper somewhere in there, 8 to 12 inch, and just taper it right out back to its original size, and that's just so we can get started on it. Now, because we marked these on the right side, this is the right side of my basket, it's going to be up. I'm going to start my weaver underneath the center piece. That's important that you're under the center and start weaving out and around. When I come to my corner, I'm going to bring this around. I don't want to flip my reed so that my wrong side is up. It's a flat oval, I want to keep the oval side up. So I'm just doing a little crimp on there, a little turn, weave one over, and then come in here and pull these very tight together and clamp them with a clothespin. Take the next two and clamp under it with a clothespin. So you're going to need eight clothespins just to hold the corners. Continue weaving this around, and again here I'm at a corner. And again, I'm making that turn underneath there, but I'm keeping the right side of my reed up. And I weave past it a little bit so it'll start holding it into shape. And come back and very tightly cross these over. This is how we make those little feet on the bottom of the basket. And also the two that are next to it. I'm going to weave to my next corner and it's just, uh, watch my spacing. And again, my right side of my reed is still up, just that little crimp in there. And the next two. Bring them under and clamp them. See how these are making peaks? That's exactly what we want. Here I've got to just check my spacing, it came out. Pull these back together. Weave around the corner, again that little crimp that keeps my Oh, let's go back and do that one again. Pull it, pack it in tight. This row needs to pack in tight, but it right up to the first uh, spokes in the basket. 
Come in here and pinch these together very tight. The next two right underneath it, pinch those tight. Now that I'm back to where I began, if I was to continue on weaving, I'd be on the very same pattern. So what I need to do is come in here and split this spoke. So on this one side, I'm going to split this spoke. We're going to do this basket in a continuous weave. That's why I need an odd number of spokes. Then I'm going to use these spokes, that, the one that I split has now become two spokes. That puts me on an opposite pattern from my original weave. And that will allow me to go around the basket in a continuous weave. I will not have to stop and start. When I come to my corner, I'm going to take my corner off, pack everything in tight, go around the corner, and again, put that little crimp in there, and come back and put this corner back up. I'll do one more corner for you. Undo it. Weave around it. Pack everything in tight. Put that little crimp on it. That little turn without turning it over. Come back and put these up. You need to leave these corners on for eight rows. By the time you finish your eighth row, begin your ninth row, it'll start um, they will be formed. Those little feet will be formed and they will be working for you. Um, pack everything in tight. Continue on. Take them off your corners and, and do your corners and put them back on. You need to do that for eight rows. I've already done this one. And I'm on my ninth row here. And you can see where my corners, um, as I worked, I kind of kept the center pushed in. And that helped form those little feet that the cat head is known for. And as I do this row, I'm going to undo my corner and go around it. And this time I can leave my corner off. And I like to do a couple more rows where it's right flat to the table. The center is flat on the table, but my little feet are sticking up there. And on this one I need to add a new piece. So I'm going to cut this one off, always ending on top. Pull it out for a couple of spokes. And because it's flat oval, it needs to, we need to trim down this oval side on the piece that we're ending with so that the next piece that overlaps it, our new piece, let me get out a new piece here, so that our new piece will lay in there and, and be flat. Okay. And I come up here and for about a half an inch, I'm just going to take off the top of that flat oval so it will lay underneath where I start. Now I'm going to go back four, which happens to be right here at the little corner, and weave on top of the piece that ran out, and keep right on going. Okay, so the ninth row, we're going to take everything off, the corners off, pack everything in tight, and then weave a couple rows while it's still on the table. here, my last corner. Now I'm back and I'm beginning my tenth row. So now I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to work it as the basket goes forward from me. And I'm going to start shaping up the sides of the basket. Continue working this around. On this row, this is my tenth row. I really don't pull anything yet to shape it. I'm just starting to form the sides up, bending it slightly forward, making sure everything's packed in tight. As I pack in this row, um, it helps hold the row before it. And you can see it's slipping a little bit. That's because I picked it up from the table. And work it around. Now as I start into my, what, 12th, 13th row, somewhere in there, I can start pulling this ever so slightly, just a little bit, as I come around the corners. And that's going to start making a bowl shape as we go up the sides. Continue working it around. Okay, I think you get the idea. Now I'm going to pull it ever so slightly right in here. Pack everything in tight. I think it's important to keep things packed tight 
as you weave because it is so difficult to go back later and do it. Okay, continue working it up. You're going to weave for 32 rows. We want 32 rows totally, so that's including the rows we put in at the base, a, a total of 32 rows. And let me show you the shape that we got on the basket as we work that up. Let me drip off some water here. Okay, can you see this? And I, it's because I pulled this in here ever so slightly that it gives it this nice round shape in here. And yet I haven't lost my feet. I still have my four little feet on there. And it sets very nicely. Okay, I've already started tucking and cutting, but before we do that, we need to end this piece here. This is the piece that I'm coming around. This is my 32nd row. And I need to end it right in here at my split spoke because that's where I started it. So I'm going to pull it out. Oh, we can clip it off here. Pull this out and put a taper in, and that's probably, what, about a six inch, five or six inch taper. So we're going to end it basically the same way we started it. And then I can come in and weave this piece back in, and it can hide underneath, uh, behind one of our split spokes there. Rewet the top and get ready to um, tuck everything in here. If the weaver, let me put it back this way for you, if the weaver um, comes behind, that spoke is going to get tucked, bent and tucked. If the weaver comes in front of the spoke, it's going to get cut off flat with the top of the basket. Now, because, um, well here, this one's going to get cut off. Okay, and this one is going to bend, and we will tuck that in in just a minute. This will be cut off, and this one is going to tuck. Because I have an odd number of spokes, I'm going to have two tucks together, and that's going to be right here. I'm going to tuck the both of these spokes in right here. And this one will be cut, and this one will be cut off, because the weaver comes in front. Now we can come inside here. I don't need this whole length, so I'm going to cut off some of the length, skip over a couple rows of weaving, and tuck that in. Again, this is one. I don't need the length. I like to put a little slant on it toward that when I do the cut on it because it just makes it travel down for the tucking so much easier than a flat end does. A couple more to tuck. And we're going to come in here and tuck them. Now this one's a little harder to tuck because it's a smaller spoke. So you might want to make that one a little shorter so it'll fit down in there and tuck in there easier for you. And just a couple more here. Make sure that bend is flat with the top of the basket. And one more. There we go. Sometimes these will slip off on the outside and I just need to push that back under there on some of them. Okay, now we're ready to put in our handles, or our ears rather. Um, I've already put one in. These I have purchased. You should be able to get them at a craft supply store. And uh, they're just a, a basic ear, and they're small. They have a one-inch spread. I need to whittle down the handle, or the part that slides into the basket, a little bit, because I don't want it to stick out too far from the basket. And then I also like to sand the ears. So you may want to take a minute and sand them. You may want to put some handle oil on it. That's always really pretty. Okay, so this ear is ready to put in. Now I've made, I've put these on the outside. On this one I have skipped over two outside weavers on my center spoke and started with my third. This goes in a little bit different on this pattern. Uh, because I'm going to put the ear right down in the same part. Here I've skipped over the two. This is my center spoke. And I'm going to slide these down into here. And I'm trying to stay, whoops, let me start again, right on top of that half inch spoke. And I want a half an inch distance from here because this is where the rim is going to rest. Now if you don't like these little pieces sticking out here, just come in and snip them off. They snip off real easy. And over here I'm going to snip that off so that the end ends here with that bottom of that weaver right there. Okay, once you have your ears in, we need to put our rim on. 
and I'm using half inch flat oval for the rim and I've taken a long piece and remember we're going to come in here and we're going to whittle this top off for about three inches where we're going to have the overlap that prevents a lot of bulk um, and it just works out much nicer to have that lay next to itself I'm starting on the side and I'm going to work it around and again this is resting the rim rest right on those notches there that's what they were created for and that's what holds that rim on and holds those well it doesn't hold the rim on but it holds the notches in it holds the ears in and I'm going to come up here and this is where I started my whittling that's where I'm going to cut it off and I come to the back of it and whittle some of this down for about an inch and a half so that it will lay next to itself a little flatter right there where we have the have the meeting inside rim is done the same way and I'm going to start on the opposite side work it around use lots of clothespins to hold this on and again I'm going to cut it off come back and whittle this down in here then we can go ahead and lash our rim on. I'm going to get it started, and then I'm going to go to the handle. Um, I've used the caning for this. I still like caning. It's probably one of my favorite lashers that I use. I'm going to put a rim filler in, but before I do that, I want to get started. Come up here. I'm working from um, the inside. I'm coming between the rim and the basket. The right side is facing out of my caning and I'm circling around. What I've done is circled around this. And I'm coming in here. I should have three rows underneath my rim. That'll take me right here, so I'm going right back in between my weavers, back to the inside. Repeat that step again. This time I'm going to leave that little tail hanging on the outside. Straighten out my reed or my caning here. And I like to put an end point because that just helps it travel a little easier. Come in here and I'm opening up an area and I'm going to go ahead and start this um, wrap for my lashing and then I'm going to stop and come back, do one more here, and put in my rim filler. And what I'm using on this today is um, this is chair rush, which you would use for the rush of a seat or you could use paper twist. I like the color of this is one reason I chose this and it's going to fit in here. I um, slide it under my close pin, fit it right on between my two rims, kind of sandwich it in there, come back and pull this end. And give it a tug and I've come back here and I'm going to pull this one and I'm going to work that lashing all the way around. And I can work out some of this rush and um, work out the length that I need and give myself about an inch extra and then uh, finish wrapping it. And I'll show you on the next basket what I did. Let me set this aside. Oh, I've got some long tails caught in here. There we go. Okay, let me set that aside. And this one I have it all lashed. When I came to my ears, I crossed in front of the whole ear section. Can you see that? And that's going to hold that in tight. And then I'm going to finish this. I need to wet it here. It should have been soaking. You can soak yours. And we're going to end it the very same way we started it, but we have to work it underneath this rush or whatever you used for a filler. And we're going to end it the very same way. Maybe. There it comes. Gently lift up your filler and slide it under the filler and then put it on the outside. And then I like to repeat this step again. Um, you may want to do that too. I, it just uh, secures it in. But if it's real tight in there, you can get away with once. Okay, to build our handle, I've used half inch flat oval for the handle. Um, I've built one side already. The other side, let me hook it on here. 
and clamp it and I'll get the height and then I'll show you how I built that one side. Put it in here. I like it to be uh, just a little bit, if I lay it out, I like it to be just a little bit beyond the rim. I think I'll draw it down a little tighter, about that height right there. And I need it to come up here about three to four inches and clamp it off. Uh, I'm sorry, and put a bend on it so I know where it's going to bend on the ear. And then we're going to come back in here and I'm going to whittle this down just beyond the bend. So a little bit farther than the bend, you're going to whittle this down. Come across to this side and I take off a little bit of the sides, like so. Place it back in there and clamp it. Now I start out, here I've got my caning, and I'm going to grab another piece of caning. I need those shorter pieces for a pattern I want to show you. Come in here, flats, or the right side faces the basket, and when I bring it around, I do a miter, bring it around, and I'm going to do a solid wrap. And I like to do this solid wrap up about a couple of inches. Okay, I'm going to grab the next basket where I have the wrap already done. On this basket, I've already done the wrap. Let it drip for a second here. And I've already started my two uh, pieces of caning that I need for the design. And I simply stuck them under here and just wrap the ends around to secure them in there. And uh, I like to wrap up for, like I said, a couple of inches. And you can measure it. And it's probably a good idea, too, um, to, to come in here and measure it and come over here and measure the side. Then I, I'm going to do, uh, we're going to need two extra measurements up there because I'm going to do a solid wrap when I get to the top of the handle. And I'll show you that on the finished basket. To start this design in here, I'm going to go under my first one, over my second one and bring it around. And this time I'm going over my first one, under my second. You could make your design a little bit different, go a couple wraps over, a couple wraps under. Uh, that's just the way I chosen to do it. But don't be afraid to get creative and do something, you know, really neat on this. But that creates that handle. Coming back to this finished one real quick, what I did was I have two inch wrap here, and then I have my design up this far. And from here to here, and I measured it to make sure I stayed in the center, I did a solid wrap, then continued my design, and continued my solid wrap. And I'm going to go to one more basket and show you how to end this one here. Now I'll show you the wrap here. I finished wrapping this one down, but I want to show you how to end it real quickly here. I put my uh, solid wrap up here and my pattern on either side of the handle. I'm almost down here to the end. And I have these tails here from the design I put in. And you need to cut those off at two different lengths. That Just make them so they'll fit in there. Um, you won't have any bulk showing. Or, and you're going to continue this wrap all the way down to here. And then we're going to end it real quickly. Come around to the other side and cut off some of this length. You only need about six inches. Come up inside here and loosen the wrap at the end of the handle, up about three or four. Stick the end up there and then use your thumb and finger and tighten this all back down. And make sure all it, uh, the wrap butts up to one another. I'm working it and I'm pulling and tugging on it. Do your trim work and, uh, and then you have your, your shaker cat head, ob oblong cat head basket. Next week we're going to be working on our doorknob basket, kind of a neat pattern. And I'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a good week.